On this worksheet, we're going to be solving a few different types of problems that require us to use the integrated rate laws. And the first problem is telling us that it's a second order reaction. This is going to be important because the rate law depends on the order of the reaction. So we need to pay attention that this reaction is second order. Uh, it's telling us that the rate constant is 0.54, so that's little k. And it's asking us to calculate how long, that's represented by lowercase t, how long in seconds would it take for the concentration of NO2 to decrease from 0.62, so that means that's our initial concentration, to 0.28, so that's going to be our final concentration. For a second order reaction, the integrated rate law says uh, 1 over the concentration of A at some time t is equal to 1 over the initial concentration of A, or A at time 0, plus the rate constant times the time. The final concentration, of what we have here at 0.28, is represented in the rate law by A sub t. So the concentration of A at this particular time, and the initial concentration is represented at with A sub zero. The letter A is just used to generically represent any reactant uh, in the equation. So what we're going to do is just plug in these values, our final concentration, which is 0.28, and our initial concentration, which is 0.62, and to that we're going to be adding our rate constant, which is 0.54, and then multiplying by the time t. So we just need to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation here to solve for t. I'm going to begin by going oh, 1.28, 1 divided by 0.28 minus 1 divided by 0.62, and that gives me 1.959 is equal to 0.54 times the time, and then I can solve for t. Um, 3.63 seconds. The second problem that we're going to work on is a first order reaction, so we want to pay attention to that because the equations do change based on the order of the reaction. This one is telling us that the half-life is 35 seconds, so the half-life we represent with the notation t one half, and we're being asked to calculate the rate constant k for this reaction. And then we're also being asked to calculate the amount of time that it takes for 95% to decompose. This is actually like a part two, so we're not going to worry about this part of the problem yet. We're going to begin by just solving for the rate constant k. And to do that, we're going to use the half-life equation. The half-life equation gives us a relationship between t one half and the rate constant. For a first order reaction, which is what we're looking at here, the half-life is T1 half equals 0.693, or the natural log of 2, divided by the rate constant K. I'm going to just rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to rearrange it to say T1 half times the rate constant K is equal to 0.693, and then I'm going to divide both sides by T1 half. So I've got my K isolated there, and now I'm ready to plug in the time of the half-life, which is 35 seconds, and solve for k. 0.693 divided by 35, we have a rate constant of 0 0.0198. Now it wants us to calculate the amount of time that it takes for 95% of our reactant to decompose. And to do that, we're going to be going back to the integrated rate law. For a first order reaction, the integrated rate law is the natural log of our reactant A at time t that is equal to negative kt, the rate constant, times the time, plus the natural log of A initial. Now we just figured out the value of k, so we're ready to plug that number in, and the question is asking us to solve for t, so this is our unknown variable. Initially it might not feel like we have enough information for to solve this problem because it hasn't given us an amount of a initial or a at time t. So it might feel like we don't know these numbers, and technically we don't, but we have the information necessary to figure them out. We're being asked to figure out how long it takes for 95% to decompose. So we're being asked to figure out the time where the concentration of a at whatever this time might be is only 5% of the initial concentration 
so 0 0.05 times the initial concentration. Uh, again, we're being asked to determine how long it takes for 95% to react. When 95% of it has reacted, we only have 5% or 0 0.05 left. So the concentration that we're looking for at time t is just going to be 5% of what we originally started with. And what I'm going to do is use this representation in place of a t in this equation right here. So I'm going to get the natural log of 0 0.05 times a initial, and that is equal to a negative kt plus the natural log of a initial. And then I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra on this. So my next step, I'm going to put both of those natural logs on the same side. So we have the natural log of 0.5 times a initial minus the natural log of a initial. And all I've done there is just take this term and moved it over to this side, and that's going to be equal to negative kt. One of the properties of logs or natural logs is when you have the natural log of something minus the natural log of the other thing, we can rewrite that as a fraction. So we get the natural log of 0.5 a initial over a initial. And that is equal to negative kt. And if that was some math witchcraft there that you're not familiar with, that's just a property of natural logs. So if we have the natural log of, let's say, x minus the natural log of y, we can write, rewrite that as the natural log of x divided by y. And that's what I've done here. When we do this rewriting process, um, it allows us to cancel out these A initial concentrations. So even though we don't know what they are, it doesn't matter because they just get removed completely from this equation. Um, so now we can solve. I'm going to begin by solving for the natural log of 0.5. That is negative 0.693. And that is equal to our rate constant, 0 0.0198, negative 0 0.0198 times the time. Negative 0.693 divided by negative 0 0.0198 gives us a time of 35 seconds. And our last problem here, what is the half-life if 70% decomposes in 60 minutes, assuming that we have first-order kinetics? Um, so it, it feels like we should jump straight to a half-life equation, but we can't. Let's write down uh, for a first order reaction, which is the same as the reaction that we had in problem two. For a first order reaction, the half-life is dependent on the rate constant K. So in order to calculate the half-life for this reaction, we need to know the value of the rate constant K. To figure out the value of k, we need to use the integrated rate law right here. The natural log of a at time t is equal to negative kt plus the natural log of a at time 0. Now, this is telling us in 60 minutes, so that's our time t, the sample decomposes um, by 75%. So we're going to do the same sort of thing as what we had to do up here. We need to write a relationship between a t and a zero. So we're saying at time t, 75% of our sample has decomposed. We only have 25% or 0.25% of what we started with initially. And we're going to take this and we're going to substitute it into the integrated rate law in place of a t. So we're going to get the natural log of 0.25 times the initial concentration of a. And that is going to be equal to negative k times the time plus the natural log of the initial concentration of a. We're going to move that natural log of a over to the left-hand side of the equation. So we get natural log of 0.25 a at time 0 minus the natural log of a at time 0 is equal to negative kt. And then again, we're going to use this same fraction relationship. So we get the natural log of 0.25 a at time 0 divided by a at time 0 is equal to negative kt. These two terms cancel out. And we go up over here, the natural log of 0.25 is negative 1.386. 
and that is equal to negative k, what we're trying to figure out, times 60 minutes. And we want to make a note here that we're dealing with minutes, which is unusual. Normally, these are in seconds. So our rate constant is going to be one, negative 1.386 divided by negative 60. 0.0231. Now this isn't what the problem is asking us to figure out. It's asking us to figure out the half-life. And to figure out the half-life, here's the equation that we use, and we know the value of the rate constant k, so we're ready to use this equation. T1 half is 0.693 divided by k, which is 0.0231. And that gives us a half-life of 30. Remember that we're dealing with minutes here.